It's a sunny day. All the orchid ninjas rejoice. <laughs> it's a sunny day. I cannot, cannot believe it. My goodness, por fin. Welcome to this care collab of the Fias Tuncumbiliae together with Todd's Tropicals. My beautiful, beautiful Fias. Every single year I have this problem. Look at her leaves. Ah, no matter how or where I put her, how I try to protect her, she gets hammered and then my leaves go downhill. Sometimes, because of the dry, dry air that I have, I have not enough humidity to make this orchid happy. Let's move away from the angle of the sun a bit. Woo, we've got sun. Let's make sure that that doesn't start to interfere, like that maybe. But, yeah, if it's not the lack of humidity during the summer as the new growth push out, it is the wind and the rain. And I'm so sorry for the jiggling there. Oh, maybe that's better. The wind and the rain has taken out my beautiful Fias leaves this year. I took out a spike last year. That was me, silly me, clumsy me but I had some help from the wind, which was annoying. This year, I still have two spikes. We are now mid-March, and I am still waiting for these spikes to even show any signs of buds, even though they are swelling. You see, I have a very rickety little support here, but that is only in case I need to support the spikes. And if the next wind storm comes along, they will be tied to that support. But other than that, she is a super, super happy orchid in a huge bucket of Lekka. That's all I can say about that. And further down, if I can, yeah, there you see, I've gathered rainwater. To the left is my Cymbidium mask. I'm keeping the rainwater. I'm keeping the masks off the pot at the moment because every day I use a little bit of that white rainwater and just flush her through so that she can get those nice, nice rain feels into her roots. And then eventually I'm going to wash out that mask, much needed, and I'll fill it up with 300 parts per million of fertilizer. And she is a drinker, especially now because of the spikes, but also when she starts going into active growth. And we'll go in a little bit closer to have a look-see at her growth right now. She's starting a new growth over there on the left. And then there's something swelling on the top and below there on that old bulb. And here's a good thing I want to show you that some of the roots will fail when the growth is just fresh and new because I have extremely hot, dry summers, 30% humidity at the most and that makes roots fail especially if you're talking about a terrestrial or semi-terrestrial orchid because they do not like the air at all they need to get into media super quick and in the summer i come across and spray this orchid down every single day just the surface of the leca but you see i don't get all of them unfortunately i can't save them all i say this is collateral damage I'm okay with that. I don't mind having to deal with failed roots if 90% of them are going in the pot, which is the case. An amazing orchid. Also called the nun's orchid because of the shape of her blooms. The outer petals and sepals are white and then inside the colors are a burnt bronze kind of thing. Looks very much like a Lelia in my opinion. I don't have any fragrance, but yeah, so just because of the outer shape and color of the sepals and petals, it's also called the nun's orchid. And I have to say that when I hear terrestrial orchid or semi-terrestrial orchid, I have no qualms bouncing right in and chucking them into Lekka and self-watering because I know that that is how they're gonna be able to grow really, really well. Back in the 80s, I was growing house plants in Lekka and semi-hydro. It, it was the fad at the time, it all came in and I thought, yeah, I'm jumping on that boat because I don't like to work with soil, especially not indoors with carpet. 
And this is a super clean method for indoor house plants and I was like all over it. So when I hear semi-terrestrial or terrestrial orchid, Lekka, straight away, if you can keep up with the watering. Semi-hydro, she was struggling because she was such a drinker and the root ball is extensive. So it might appear that I have overpotted her based on the size of the pot that you can see, which is, it's a 30 centimeter pot, but she is not overpotted. If anything, I can see the Lekka rising and getting a little bit all bouncy and bubbly and that's not the birds. If it was the birds, I would see Lekka on the floor, but the Lekka is rising. There are a lot of roots in that pot. I don't think that I want to be worrying about having to take care of a Fias every year simply because she's outgrowing the pot. And her growth habit is also such that she produces like runners. I started off with these two bulbs and this bulb back here and subsequently grew new bulbs and that's how they develop with their new growths. This one is a runner. This bulb was not here, but it's developing its own little section. So there are tendencies for this orchid to propagate itself with new growth, but along a rhizome, which is amazing. And that is why I don't consider my orchid overpotted in the slightest. To propagate her, I tried that, didn't work. If I try it again this year, I'm going to keep the stem as intact as possible and only expose the nodes. Last year, I cut the stem down all the way to the base and then I chopped up every single piece node by node and stuck it into sphagnum moss. But I don't think that there's enough energy in a stem or of a fias to be able to maintain and grow something of substance that also needs to produce roots in order to become its own plant. So if I'm going to risk it this year, the ideal time to propagate is while the blooms are still somewhat fresh, maybe the bottom two can drop, but to sacrifice the top blooms, and then I'm going to maybe, again, maybe <laughs> um, propagate, but leave the stem as intact as possible, make it one cut and open the nodes up that way and have just two pieces and see what happens. But I, like I said, maybe because I am so happy to see two spikes. And if I can get two spikes to bloom this year, instead of messing it up and breaking one like I did last year, I will be over the moon because these orchids are beasts. If you can get it right, and if your climate is conducive, the foliage is gorgeous. It's like a palm tree kind of structure foliage. Absolutely amazing. So you've got a palm tree and an orchid in one. It's, it's hard to beat. It really, really is hard to beat. In my case, I am just glad that she does bloom for me, that she will grow for me, despite the fact looking a little bit on the unkempt side, which, yeah. Anyway, I'm not growing for a show. I just am so appreciative that this orchid is able to tolerate what's being thrown at her and still give me blooms. I'm not gonna be without her, and it's gonna be another two or three years before I repot, that's for sure, because that is going to be interesting. I can go up a pot size, but then we are really in trouble with weight. I'm already struggling to carry this. That will be propagation time. But I do want to see how long I can keep her in this setup, in this pot, without having to disturb her. So let's give her some rainwater, just a flush. while it's nice and warm over that root that might fail. And just let it pour out and I'm gonna pick the runoff, pick it up and put the mask underneath. Just rainwater has been so precious here and we finally got a big load of it. So I'm saving as much as I can. She lives outside all year round and she can handle it. My temperatures can go down to five degrees Celsius. In the winter, she has to take care of that. She has to manage because I have no space for her indoors. And my summers can be as hot up to 40 degrees Celsius. That might only be a couple of days and then it's back down to 30, 32. But yeah, she has to tolerate that as well. And I have such low humidity, which is affecting the leaves. And that is where it all begins. They start to grow all clean and nice. 
and then the humidity drops, the heat comes, we have extremely hot winds, and bam, that's when they start to suffer. Luckily, I have no issues with spider mites. These leaves are conducive for spider mites. Give them a dry climate, there's no humidity, and it's a recipe for spider mites. And luckily, I do not have that issue. I don't have a pest issue with this orchid in general. Sometimes on the new growths, I might get the odd mealy bug trying to make its way into the crown of the new growth. It's just a question of being vigilant, but she is a tough, tough cookie and a beautiful one at that. I'm seeing an aphid. Nope, that's not an aphid. With the amount of rain we have had, I'm going to be very surprised if my blooms come out clean. They have been soaked for 10 days straight. So all these crevices, everything in here, absolutely drenched. That'll make the decision for propagation easier because if they're not clean, I have no problem cutting the spike. <laughs> this is not her forever home. This is only right now while the angle of the sun helps me with the shade. She will be in full shade in the summer just to somehow help her along with regards to growing some leaves of substance without getting toasted immediately by my son. But she will be in full shade, which is extremely bright in the summer, granted. It's not like it's deep shade at all. I don't have deep shade anywhere on this patio or indoors when it comes to summer days. Everything here is surrounded and reflected with white walls, so very bright shade in my case. Yeah, and then when the angle of the sun permits, she's up against the hedge again, where she is a bit more protected. And that basically describes how I care for my fires and how she has to cope with my care. And boy, does she cope. Thank you, Todd's Tropicals, so very much for joining me on this care collab. I have seen pictures of your fires and I am so jealous. <laughs> I admit, I am jealous. First of all, yes, you might have a few brown leaf tips, but no, sir. No, sir. If you look at mine, this is, this is what I'm talking about. And what a beast your orchid is. So I encourage everyone to go check out Todd's Tropicals video on the fires Tancumbilia and how he takes care of his. And I hope to see you in my comment section. If you have this orchid, if you do videos, and if you want to join in on future care collabs, please, please email me. My email is in the description below. Email me, we'll put you on the update list for sporadic updates, and you will be on board for the next videos. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Thank you so very, very much for watching. Really appreciate your time. Stay safe. Bye.